Hello, OpenXML developers. This is Eric White with OpenXMLDeveloper.org. Today I'm presenting the first in three screencasts, the topic of which is building high performance OpenXML applications. It could also be titled building multi threaded OpenXML applications, including building a website that has multiple front ends that have OpenXML functionality. It could also be entitled, How to Avoid Seemingly Randomly Generated Object Disposed Exceptions in OpenXML Applications. The scenario that we're talking about is multi-threaded OpenXML applications. Alternatively, this situation with object disposed exceptions can occur when you have multiple instances of a particular running executable if this executable is accessing OpenXML documents and it's doing it in two separate instances, then you can get an object disposed exception. Alternatively, if you change your coding pattern, it's possible that you get null reference exceptions. These exceptions are thrown from deep within system.io.packaging. In this screencast, I'm going to explain why we get these exceptions. I'm also going to explain how to mitigate and how to solve the problem of these exceptions. So why do we get these exceptions? The OpenXML SDK, as many of you probably know, is based on the classes in system.io.packaging. Well, a little known fact is that within system.io.packaging, if there is a certain amount of usage, approximately 10 megabytes of space. System.io.packaging uses a set of classes called the isolated storage classes. Herein lies the problem. Isolated storage is not thread safe. Even more, it's not safe when you are running multiple processes if the processes have the same strong name. Isolated storage stores things in a secret directory with a randomly generated name. It's probably a name with a GUID as part of the name or something like that. I don't know the specific details of that. It's not really important to us. The key point here is all of the code that is accessing isolated storage from an assembly with a given strong name will use the same directory. And if you have this scenario where you have either two threads accessing this isolated storage directory, or if you have two processes accessing the same directory simultaneously, then you have a crash. You get the object disposed exception thrown, or if you code in a slightly different way, you'll get a null reference exception thrown. This is one of the worst types of problems that we ever encounter that we have to fix. The problem is it's not really repeatable unless you know exactly how to cause it to repeat. What you'll see is you've built a beautiful OpenXML application that either operates in a website or it might be a high performance application that uses multiple threads. For the most part, things go along just fine. You generate documents really, really quickly. Everything works well or your users can go onto the website and they can generate a document and they can download it and everybody's happy. And then just very occasionally, you'll see this exception thrown. I've seen people mitigate this by simply watching for this exception and then restarting the executable and then they do it again and then it doesn't fail. Well, that was pretty ugly, not very fun to code. And it isn't good to not know why these exceptions are generated. The problem is, is in one particular scenario, you're generating small documents. You'll continually generate small documents. The OpenXML SDK's memory usage will never go above 10 megabytes and everything goes along just fine. Then all of a sudden, one particular scenario happens where two users at the same time are manipulating large documents and you get the crash. There are primarily three scenarios where developers encounter these types of errors. First of all, as I've mentioned, you can have an ASP.NET website with multiple front ends where you have OpenXML functionality in the front end code. Second of all, you can have ultra high performance document generation. 
If you've done very, very high performance document generation, you'll notice if you make a single threaded application that you're using maybe 25% of the CPU on a four core machine. So it obviously follows. If you make it multi-threaded, you can push up that usage up to 100% and you can get a lot better performance out of your application, but then randomly you'll encounter this error. And there's also another scenario, which is ultra high performance document manipulation. You might have a document crawler or a search engine crawler that goes through tens of thousands of documents on a network share and does searches within those documents, or perhaps is doing operations such as accepting tracked revisions in those documents, and everything works fine until you happen to cause usage of memory to go above 10 megabytes. We're gonna talk about today how to mitigate the first scenario where you have an ASP.NET website with multiple front ends and you want to eliminate this type of bug for once and for all. Well, the approach that we are going to take is, in this particular scenario, is to put all document creation and manipulation in a single process. And then we're going to use inter-process communication to enable other processes or other threads to implement their desired functionality. The code that I'm going to demonstrate today uses MSMQ. MSMQ is a inter-process communication facility in Windows that enables you to, in a very lightweight way, send messages back and forth between processes or back and forth even between machines. I'll demonstrate that today. How would this work? We're going to have a document generation process. We'll have application number one. It sends a message to the document generation process. It gets its document generated. Then application number two also communicates to the document generation process. And application three also communicates back and forth to this document generation process. And because we have only one single process that is implementing OpenXML functionality, it means that only that process will be using that instance of isolated storage and will avoid the bug. You might ask, well, why can't we change isolated storage or system.io.packaging? Well, these assemblies are frozen in the .NET framework. Apparently, it's very difficult to get the development team to take a change request for these assemblies. The threshold at which system.io.packaging uses isolated storage is hard-coded because we can't change it. I have plans for approaches to actually change this, but these approaches are somewhat risky in terms of implementing an enterprise critical application. Today I'm introducing an approach that I feel comfortable to recommend to you if you are building an enterprise critical application and you need this to work out of the box without any risk. One point I want to make is the approach that we're talking about today using MSMQ, it will work for really, really high activity websites. It would be very, very difficult to bog down the system using the approach that I'm going to recommend today. So let's take a look at it and I'll show you how this works and I'll demonstrate the code in action. First thing we have to do when using MSMQ is we have to enable it in your operating system. You have to enable it on the machine where you're going to use MSMQ. In either Windows 7 or Windows 8, go to Programs and Features. Click on the link to turn Windows features on or off. And what we want to do is we want to turn on this particular option, Microsoft Message Queue MSMQ Server. Make sure it's checked. I've already turned it on for this machine, so I'm not going to click OK in that dialog box. I wrote a little daemon here. It's called the docx generation daemon. 
I'll talk about this code in more detail later. This code, it's not a huge amount of code. It's a grand total of 343 lines of code. I'm going to press F5 and run that code. And now it's running, doing its thing, waiting for another executable or another process to use it. Now I have over here an example program to use that daemon. It sends messages to this daemon using MSMQ, telling it it wants to generate some documents. One thing about this little example is it more or less simulates the type of activity that a high-performance website might need. It generates a thousand documents and it does something here where it sleeps for a tenth of a second between every document. If you had a website where users were generating 10 documents a second, that would be probably pretty high performance. And I'll show you that we can certainly use this to generate a lot more than 10 documents per second. So I'll press F5 and we can now see that this code to exercise the daemon is asking for documents to be generated and the daemon is over there happily generating documents. And now I'll show you I can start a second one and a third one. And now we can see that this daemon is really over there busily generating documents and all three of our web front ends, in quotes, are generating their documents at 10 per second. We can even run it above this. I'll start another one and another one and another one. And you can see that this more than adequately keeps up with many, many processes requesting that documents be created for each process. Just to show you what I'm doing here, I'm going to stop the daemon. I'm also going to stop each one of these other executables. And I'm going to make a slight modification and give you a super short demonstration of this document generation system. It's interesting just to show you one approach you might take for doing document generation in this scenario. This is a document generation system that I built some time ago when I was doing some experiments as to the most efficient and effective way to do document generation. The way this document generation is set up here is that I have content controls within this document that have XPath expressions in the content controls. And those XPath expressions interact with an XML file that enable us to generate documents very easily it can help to come up to the developer tab and turn on design mode and we can more easily see the various content controls. If we come down to the bottom, we see that there is a config content control that indicates it wants to select documents based on this XPath expression dot slash customer. Then once it is selected a particular customer, it can insert a customer ID at a certain point. It can generate a table by selecting multiple child elements of the customer. Let's look at the XML that this is based on. From here to here, this is the XML that those XPath expressions interact with. What happens is that XPath expression to select the customer selects this particular element. Then from that element, we can select the customer ID, the name, the high value customer flag, and we can select any number of orders to be inserted into the table that's in that document. When I wrote this, I didn't intend to keep around hundreds and thousands of documents. So after the process requests the daemon to generate a document, the web server, as it were, deletes the document. I'm going to take that out. And further, I'm going to come up here and just change it to generate only one single document. First, I'll start the daemon. Then I'll come over to the web server. I'll run it and it generated the 
one document that I told it I wanted to generate. And now let's go look at the generated document. Here is the generated document. And what we can see is this document is based on that template document, but all of the various values now have been replaced with the data that's in the XML that was passed to that daemon. Sometimes in this scenario, you might want to put that daemon off in its own server. You may not want to have the open XML generation occurring on the server that serves up your web front ends. You might want to farm this out to another isolated server. That's easy enough to do with MSMQ. First of all, I'm going to undo the little changes that I made to demonstrate the document generation system. I'm also going to come up here and tell it again that I want to generate a thousand documents. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change the code that configures MSMQ from these sets of initialized variables down to this set of initialized variables. And this will enable us to put the document generation on this other computer that is called Mini1. And then that Mini1 server will send messages back to our web server front end telling that the document has been generated and where it has put it. Here I have used remote desktop to go to the Mini1 server. I'll go run that daemon. The way I coded this daemon and the code to use the daemon, the daemon itself doesn't have to change at all in order to run on a different server. It's only the code that uses that daemon that needs to be changed. Okay, here I'm running that. This is running on the Mini 1 computer. We can see that it's running over here in this remote desktop connection. And then over here in our simulated web server, I'll press F5, and now we can see on one computer, it's requesting the documents be generated, and they're being generated over on that Mini 1 server. And as before, I can run multiple instances of this simulated web server front end. Here, I'll put this one down here so we can see it. And I can run another instance and another instance and another instance and another instance and so on. So we're getting ultra high performance document generation that's happening in multiple processes and will never have the situation occur where we get that object disposed exception occurring. The hardest part to me in putting together this content is how to actually describe the problem, how to help you figure out whether you have the problem, whether you've seen this symptom in the past. Well, it's a difficult thing to make discoverable for people who have this. I'm going to attempt to make it so that if you search on object disposed exception and open XML SDK, you'll be brought to this content. Fundamentally, the way that I'm going to solve the other two scenarios, in other words, the ultra high performance document generation scenario and the ultra high performance document manipulation scenario, it's all going to be the same. I'm going to use MSMQ and I'm going to use an approach whereby we can farm the document generation or the document manipulation out to other processes in such a way that we never have the possibility of this error being generated. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video when I discuss how to do ultra high performance document generation.